Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Sally Foote and I'm here with my friend, Sweetie. I'm just gonna tip the camera down so you can see her a little bit better. So today I wanted to present, oopsie, how to get a reluctant cat into a carrier. Now Sweetie's here. She was upstairs in one of the residence apartments, came down the carrier fine, I took her out for this. Sweetie generally does not like having any kind of a harness or leash on her. And I have her on it because I'm here in the learning center, it's a large room. I don't want to run off and you know get uh, get hidden underneath something. So we have to have like a little bit of a tether on her. And you can see she's rolling over. She doesn't really like it very much. Um, but here's some tips. So you may be at home. You know, you may have a client at home who's like, oh, I've got to get the cat in the carrier now because he's sick. He's vomiting. He has diarrhea. We they have not followed our typical, you know, advice to keep the carrier out, to feed the food in the carrier, to do all these things to help make it better for the cat. And they need to get the cat in now. So before the cat gets underneath the bed, how can we do this? Well, the first thing is I, I think it's best to keep the carrier like away from the cat. And first you want to get like a hold of the cat in a way that's less upsetting for the cat. Um, so what we can tend to do is, I'm just gonna do this because I don't want Sweetie to get too tight on the leash. She tends to resist it more. But taking a blanket like this or a towel, and I've already sprayed this towel with the feel away. I want you to notice, I have about a quarter of the top edge of the towel over my front two hands. I'm gonna, I know, I'm gonna tip the camera down just a little bit better so you can see Sweetie here. So let's say this is your cat. She's kind of laying on the floor, she's kind of, hunkered on the couch in the corner, you know, like I need to get you. You're gonna have your hands to the side like this that the cat can't see you. And we're, I know, we're gonna come over and up her head. And you see how I have the front part of the towel over her body so I can scoop around like this. <laughs> she can't go forward. She's not gonna escape from my arms. You see my forearms are underneath her body. Now when I come to the carrier like so, and I present her, it was a little hard to see, but I put that whole blanket-like tube in there so she could only go forward and go right in. Sorry about that, folks. Let me tip it up a little bit. I don't have a separate camera person here. So anyway, let me get my stuffed cat to demonstrate it for you. <laughs> but now I want people to see, you know, with a real, actual cat. Yeah, and I'm going to give you your leash because it doesn't I wanna, don't want it to tighten up in there. Go. And you can see she's not upset, she's not crying, but the tip, the way we did this was, so Sweetie's laying like this on the floor, she's pulling away, I have the towel, you have to have this upper edge flipped over your hands, because let's get this cat more in view, because as you come over the cat, like so, the upper edge is going to go over the head. You see that? We're all the way over the head. And the hands need to come down. See how I'm on either side here holding it? And the forearms on the ground. So when you scoop together, I'm underneath and around the head and underneath around the body. So now the towel is completely encasing the cat so they can't struggle and get away. The trouble is most people, because they haven't learned these steps, and that's the point of these YouTube videos is they've kind of thrown the cat over the towel, excuse me, the, the towel over the cat, excuse me, and like the edge is like so. So the cat can still see what's going on and, it, and they're seeing you reach and that upsets them. Secondly, then they're just kind of holding the shoulders so the cat starts to struggle and he gets out of the towel. And remember with cats, you have two tries of trying to get them, you know, handled be, because the more they struggle, their adrenaline rises, they struggle harder and then they start biting. And remember, as soon as the cat gets loose, then they're gonna go hide. They're gonna go underneath that bed where you can't reach them, underneath the dresser, up into the ceiling, whatever, right? And then you've got the client calling you saying, oh my gosh, I cannot get Sweetie out. She got loose somewhere behind the back of the pantry and I can't find her now, and you know, our appointments are filled. We can't reschedule, you know, difficult to reschedule. This cat is sick, it's all just going to be a mess. So, tell your clients to get this is the feel away spray. I had sprayed the blanket, 
Actually, I also have it spray, spray, excuse me, in the carrier. And you can see Sweetie is quiet. Yeah, you are, honey. She's quiet. She's not meowing. She's actually, you want to come up here and show the people in internet land? She's right up there by the front of the carrier. So she she's really relatively calm in here right now, which is excellent. And then for actually traveling to the veterinarian, I would take the same towel and totally cover, I'm going to go this way with it, cover the carrier so that when we carry her, she's not seeing things pass around. Another dog isn't going to put their face right up to her. And she's going to keep inhaling that peel away to get the benefit of the pheromone spray. When you pick up the carrier, before you pick up the carrier, always test the door. Pull on the door to make sure it's latched. We've had some of these cats because they are pawing at the carrier door that jostled it loose and then um, the door springs open when people are carrying it out to the car or from the car into the veterinary clinic. We don't want to lose the cat. So cover this and when you do carry the cat, pick it up by the handle and hold the towel like so. Because now the towel is holding that door shut just in case it did jostle shut. And it again it helps that pheromone spray be even more intense, you know, in the carrier. Now then, for getting a kitty cat out, now sweetie, you might just come right out because you're up at the front. But let's say the cat was sitting in the back half of the carrier. Because a cat who's upset or stressed, more of a stressed cat, they want to hide. So they're going to hold their body below the seam line of the carrier, usually in the back half of the carrier. Now the inclination is to, oh, I'll open the door and I'll reach in and get the cat, but reach is the worst thing to do because it has the cat feeling trapped and then the cat will rise and its anxiety go to aggression and strike, hiss, swat, or possibly bite at you. And then they're already in an aggressive state when you're pulling them out of the carrier for the exam. So they they become aggressive for the veterinary exam. So if we need to get them out of the carrier, let's now if the cat was in that back half of the carrier in this lower half, I would take the carrier apart. Let's pretend the carrier is rusted shut and we can't get the bolts apart, okay? Or they're zip tied shut and we don't have a pack of zip ties to replace them. How am I gonna get the cat out of the carrier? Yeah. So this is what we'll do. We'll have our towel, remember, always have a towel down, maybe even two. For these feline exams, I'm going to have a towel down, and I'm going to open the door. Now, she's going to come right out, I know. But let's say if she didn't come straight out, we would just tip the carrier up like so. This is what I call the slow dump truck technique, until it gets even this high, and then when you lift it, lift it straight up. Because if you, lift, if you start the lift with it tipped back like this, the cat rocks its body weight back and doesn't come out of the carrier. Okay, well, those are some quick tips about how to help it be nice for the cat to get in the carrier, how to help get your cat in the carrier immediately. Uh, you can find out more about me at my website, drsallyjfoot.com. I have online, on-demand, continuing education for veterinarians and veterinary technicians. I'm also starting my uh, immersion veterinary courses. This is one-on-one, -on -one, hands-on uh, handling We're with kitties like Sweetie and other community cats as well as dogs. You are going to do the veterinary exam uh, supervised by myself or another low stress handling coach and we're going to watch you do the exam giving you coaching for how you change your approach and you learn to do this in a, our model veterinary practice in an actual exam room with the actual cat scales just like at a veterinary practice you can take that knowledge Take it back to work and immediately start having improved skills for uh, the calm as well as the anxious, painful, injured, or anxious animal. March 6th is our first feline immersion course day. You can find out about it and register at my event page at drsallyjfoot.com. And March 13th, I am having a dog and cat essential low stress handling uh, course day for immersion learning. Thanks a lot and take care. Bye-bye.